Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about the basics of plasma cutting. Before we get too far into things, let's go ahead and just touch on safety. Uh, first, your eyes. You need to have some eye protection that is dark because this is a really bright process like welding is. Now, I'm running a 30 amp machine here, which means that a shade five is dark enough for me, but as you go up to higher amperage machines, you need to have a darker shade. Material can get really hot. Sometimes if you cut fast, you can touch things right away, but just be very careful uh, not to touch your material or get in the way of that plasma arc that's shooting out because it's very hot and that could definitely burn you. You know, this is a really smoky process. All that material that comes out of your kerf, that goes right into the air. So I'm using my makeshift fume extractor here. In addition to that, I have both sides of my garage open to get a cross breeze through. I'm wearing a respirator is not a bad idea. Now let's talk a little bit about machines. What differentiates one machine from another? Well, the main thing, at least the main thing that's advertised is the amperage. Right, and so a higher amperage machine can typically cut thicker pieces. I have two machines in my shop. One is a 30 amp, it's a Hypertherm PowerMax 30. I've had it for about eight years, and then I have a Hypertherm PowerMax 45 XP on my CNC plasma table. Now, another thing to consider is the working gas that you need for your machine. You know, you can get gases in cylinders like nitrogen, but typically for us working in our garages, we're gonna be cutting with compressed air which means you need an adequate air compressor. Now for this 30 amp machine, it doesn't take a lot of air, so I'm able to use this little Harbor Freight 15 gallon super quiet compressor. For my uh, PowerMax 45, it uses a little bit more air, so I need to use my larger compressor for that one, which is a bit noisier, but uh, necessary to get the job done. So that's something to think about. There are also models available that have a built-in air compressor, but they're less common. Now a few other things about how they work or what you might look for, um, most machines these days have a pilot arc. What that means is you actually have an arc that goes between an electrode here in your gun and this nozzle, which is your pilot arc, and that kind of gets things started. And then from there, you have your main arc where it goes from your electrode clear onto your workpiece and it'll transfer um, between that first arc. So if you just pull the trigger and you're not by anything, that's what you're seeing is that pilot arc then it transfers over to your actual material. See, so if I don't put on my work clamp to complete that circuit, I don't have enough power to actually cut through this material here. That's why you have to put a work clamp on to complete that circuit so that you can have both the pilot arc and the main arc. There are machines in the past that don't have pilot arcs, but it's less common these days. Now, as far as actually starting that arc, it's not too different from welding in that you have to have a way to get it started, right? When you're stick welding, you have to actually touch your electrode to the workpiece to strike an arc. Where with a lot of TIG welders, um, you actually have a high frequency arc starting. It's the same way here, and those are basically the two ways that uh, it's done, at least in these common torches. With high frequency arc starting, that arc is able to jump a gap between the electrode and the nozzle here to start your pilot arc and that gets everything going now the other way that it's uh, commonly started these days is with a blowback system and that's what both of my hypertherms have and so basically that strikes an arc by having the electrode in contact with the nozzle all the time and then when air starts to come through the torch it actually moves it back to sort of strike the arc okay, so let's take a look at what's inside here this is a swirl ring right here it controls kind of the airflow through the system and then you have an electrode here and this electrode is made of copper but up in the end i don't know if you can tell there but there's a little pit in there um, when these are new let's look at a new one just to compare it there's actually a little silver dot there and that dot is a different material i believe it's hafnium and that's uh, what emits your arc here inside the system so all these are consumables but the ones you have to change most often are this nozzle and electrode and i usually change them in pairs all right so now that we've taken a look at the consumables on here you know the ones that came with your machine might be a little bit different depending on the arrangement you know and some have shields that uh, will maintain a gap. Sometimes you have to actually hold a gap or in the case of this, you can drag it right along. So that's gonna vary from machine to machine. Now, as far as settings go for plasma cutting, most machines only have one setting, right? A single knob and you're setting amperage. And on my machines, the 30 amp and the 45 amp machines, I just leave them cranked all the way up. What I vary rather than the amperage on these size of machines is my travel speed. Now, a lot of plasma cutters will have a cut chart and this is 
a cut chart that I use when I'm programming things for a computer controlled plasma cutter. But when you're cutting by hand, I think it's a lot easier to just look for clues to know if you're traveling too fast or too slow and adjust accordingly in real time. So let me show you a cut at an appropriate speed. When I'm cutting along here, I see the sparks not shooting straight down, but dragging behind just a little bit. They're not dragging way behind. And that's when I know I'm gonna have a really nice cut. I'm moving at an appropriate speed. And honestly, getting a uh, good cut, your travel speed is the main part of the game. Anyway, so if I travel too fast, like in this, you can see the sparks are shooting way far behind me, or they're even shooting back up at me, which can actually plug up your consumables and end up, uh, you know, creating a lot of hassle for you and you won't get a good cut or it won't be cut through at all. But as far as cutting too slow, you'll see those sparks just shooting straight down out of the torch. You probably need to pick it up a little bit because at the end of the day, you're going to end up with not only worse cut quality, you'll also end up with a lot of dry or material buildup down there on the bottom of the cut. Now here, if you look at this quarter inch thick material that I cut, I believe I moved at an appropriate speed here using this 30 amp machine, but I still got quite a bit of dross. Now I am getting to the higher end of what this machine is capable of cutting. And usually when you do that, I've found that some amount of dross is inevitable. However, that dross just cleans off pretty easily with a chipping hammer, you're able to knock it off and it's not a big deal. One other thing is a lot of plasma cutters require you to set your own air pressure. Some have an internal regulator that's automatically set others you have to set it yourself. Now let's just talk a little bit about technique. So for technique, you know, for me, I'm trying to point my plasma jet straight up and down out of the material. Some people will try to tip it forward a little bit, but uh, you know, I, I really think that becomes more of a hassle than it helps. So I'm pointing it straight up and down. Now I like to pull my torch towards me rather than pushing it away because I feel like I have better control as I drag the torch in this direction than I would if I was trying to push it around and it might get a little bit wobbly. Also, I like to use a guide whenever I can. So right here, I'm just using a ruler. This is one that I use for this all the time. Um, you can see it's kind of nicked up and, and beat up from it, but uh, it works just fine. I just clamp it on with a couple of these pony clamps. These are really nice to have around for about a buck. You know, I just take the rubber tips off there and I can use them to hold stuff in place. And that gives me a nice guide. I can just drag the edge of my gun along and end up getting a nice smooth cut. I mean, I get as straight a cut as possible there. Now there are other specialized types of guides or stencils. You can make stencils or uh, other things, but this is a circle cutting guide that I think works really well. It's pretty cool. You're able to get a nice circle with it. And uh, this one just hooks on with a magnet, but there's all sorts out there that you can pick up and get that work just fine. And uh, last of all, you know, this is probably not super important for, for everybody, but one thing that a lot of people don't know is the air inside these guns actually swirls around. And part of the reason for that is to give a straight cut, but you really get a straight cut more on one side of the uh, arc than on the other. And at least on the hypertherm machines, and I believe on most machines, it's on the right side. So imagine you are the torch walking forward in the direction you're going. The right side is going to be a straighter cut than the left side. So those are the basics of plasma cutting. You can get out there, hopefully make some nice cuts. If you have other questions or want to talk more about uh, different topics, let me know in those comments below. If you like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up and we'll see you next time.